Today on episode six of the Play Guitar Podcast, I unpack guitar scales. It's not just about memorizing a bunch of patterns. Once you know what they really are and how to use them, you'll be unstoppable. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode six of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee, and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that'll help you become the guitarist you always wanted to be. Well, hey there, everybody. The title for today's show is called Really Understanding Guitar Scales. On today's episode, I'm going to start tackling guitar scales. Uh, I've recently started series on my blog that's designed to give you the behind the scene knowledge about guitar scales. Uh, this kind of came to me out of necessity. I've had a few new students recently sign up and all of them were super interested in playing lead guitar. They've all started learning some pentatonic scale patterns before coming to me. Their biggest, you know, they're frustrated. They've been wanting to know how to use these pentatonics in songs and wanting to get some different sounds out of them. And really, some of those sounds are, aren't what pentatonics do. Uh, it's just given me the job of finding the best way to fill in the background, that foundational information that's missing from someone who's already dipped their toes in the water of playing lead guitar. Uh, it's, it's really easy just to get a few scale patterns and watch a few videos and get started. But before you know it, you realize there's a lot more to it. I see a lot of memorizing from tabs and videos of classic guitar so stuff we all know and, and that's really cool for a while and it makes you feel good but after a while it's easy to run into that brick wall you, you realize you're not really developing your own sound on the guitar you're just mimicking what other players have done uh, so I started coming up for a plan with these guys uh, now I'm looking back over what I've done and a lot of it's just changing your approach to playing the scales the guitar's visual we see lots of shapes, and we see lots of patterns. Over time, we start to associate these shapes and the patterns with certain sounds. Now, what the problem is to make actual good sounding melodies on not just guitar, but any instrument, you need some basic knowledge of how scales work and how they relate to the chords that you're playing over. So when you learn a guitar part from one of your favorite songs, what are you doing? Nine times out of 10, you probably looked the tab up for a song on Google or you went on to YouTube and found a lesson for the song that you're wanting to play, then you start finding what fret and what string each note is played on. One after another, from beginning to end. And after a while, you have something that sounds like a song and you can repeat it. Play it over and over and over and over again. Maybe the first note starts at the 12th fret on the B string and then moves up to the 13th fret. And then to the 15th fret, and then on to the 12th fret on the E string. And that's how you think about it. That's how you play it every time. The same way over and over until it becomes super easy for you to play. But then at one point, you're ready for a new song. You leave it. You move on to memorizing another song or lead. You have a big uh, stable of songs at your command that you can play exactly like the original song that came out. But what I would like for you to do is I'd like for you to be able to reverse the tables, turn them around, try to come at learning the songs in a different way. Let's think about the approach that the guy or the girl who originally came up with that guitar part was using. They may have just had a chord progression that they, they came up with or someone else gave to them. And then they had to come up with a melody that worked over those chords or they may have found this melody while playing through some scales. And either way, to finish the part, you have to be able to match the chords and the scales a certain way to have a good sounding song. So that's what I've been working on, a way for guitar players to get this important knowledge that they need. I've posted about it twice already. Uh, the first one's called The Best Way to Learn Guitar Scales. And the second post is called The First Scales to Learn on the Guitar. 
You can check them over out at oh, check them out over at Play Guitar Podcast. I'll also have links to them in the show notes, and the show notes are at playguitarpodcast.com forward slash zero zero six. Uh, so I'm going to go over this information today and I'll expand on it a little bit, talk about it a little bit. I, I also have some other great news starting last week. You could find play guitar podcast now in iTunes and I'm super excited about this, but I could really use your help, uh, to get a good foothold for the show in iTunes. I need a bunch of subscribers and reviews and I would love it if you could help me out by subscribing to the show and leaving a review or a rate a review and a rating for me in iTunes if you could. If you do that for me, I'd be so thankful. I'm going to have a special section of the show each week to thank all of you for helping me out with what I'm going through here on iTunes. It's really easy to do too. So if you just go to my website, playguitarpodcast.com, scroll down a little bit below the big logo that you see right when you first open it up, scroll down a bit and you'll see a button that says subscribe in iTunes. If you click that button, it opens up to my iTunes preview page which is, it's just a, uh, it's just a web page, but right under my little red logo on that preview page, you'll see a little blue button says view in iTunes. That's the magic button that will open up iTunes on your computer or the iTunes podcast, podcast, excuse me, app on your phone or your tablet. And from there you can subscribe to the show under the red logo right there on the left. Uh, you can also leave a rating and review by clicking the ratings and review tab. Like I said, it's super easy to do and only takes a minute or so, and I would really appreciate your help with this, so thank you so much. Okay, so enough with that. Let's get on to our topic today, and it's called Really Knowing and Understanding Guitar Skills. Okay, I've found that most of my new students who come to me already learning guitar scales and lead guitar on their own They come to me generally frustrated. Uh, Over time, I could see I kept teaching the same thing over and over again to help get these guitar players out of their rut. I took all these things, all these basic ideas about why and about how guitar scales work. I formed my six-step plan to learning guitar scales, and we're going to start tackling that today. Uh, So what's the best way to learn guitar scales? I found that strumming chords is usually the first thing new guitar players are interested in. But after a while, there comes a time when most start thinking about playing melodies and guitar solos. You know, hearing these great sounding electric guitar solos and beautiful acoustic melodies, it can be very enticing. They sound fun and effortless and awesome. But... Answering the call to be a lead guitar player is a hard road to travel, especially if you don't have a plan. I've had many frustrated new students come to me after picking up, they they pick up a few minor pentatonic scales or major scale patterns. They can play them up and down, but soon they find out that just being able to play them, that's not enough. I say slow down there before we start using these patterns to make our own leads. There's some important information that we just have to know. To get the most out of these patterns, you need to know what they are and why they work. Once you get this, once you understand this, it makes all the difference in the world. This is the stuff that your favorite players know. This is how they come up with these things. They can come up with so many licks that always sound great. They never sound like they're copying anybody else. They sound like themselves. So let's take a look at this super important information. I guarantee it'll put you on the fast track to success with playing lead guitar. My favorite way to help students get started understanding and using scales is to follow the six step plan. This is what I came up with. So here are the six steps. Number one, understand how the fretboard is set up. Number two is to understand what scales are and how they're built. You notice I didn't say learn a bunch of patterns. The first part we want to do is understand. So one is how understand the fretboard set up. Number two is understand what scales are and how they're built. Number three, know the best scales to learn for your style of music. After that, four, now we start to break those scales down into manageable patterns. Number five is to start playing those patterns over chords. And then number six is to be able to slide them around, put them into different keys. That's it. I've seen so many students have their light bulb moment with the eyes open up and they say, I get it. 
And that happens after working their way through these steps. It's like somebody switched on the lights in a dark room and everything became clear, made sense. They were finally on the right path. So let's get started going through these steps. The, the first step we've talked about before, it's called understand how the fretboard is set up. In fact, if you go to uh, episode three of the Play Guitar Podcast, that's called Open Up the Fretboard, and I talk exhaustively about how the fretboard works. You know, what you need to know to move around on the guitar. You'd be surprised at how many people, guitar players, have been playing for years. They just don't know this stuff. Um, we talk about the notes on a single string. We talk about, you know, how the, where the fretboard repeats itself, how the strings overlap, simple octave shapes that help unlock the fretboard. Those are some of the topics that we, we talk about in that. So, so I highly recommend to go back and check out episode three. We've already tackled this part, but you really need to know how the fretboard is set up, where the notes are, what the different notes are. So let's move on to step two. Understand what scales are and how they're built. This is big. We really need to know exactly what we're dealing with when we start to play scales. And we need to break it down as simply as possible. And here it is. A scale is a group of notes played usually in order by pitch, one after another, that sound good together. It's that simple. You could say that they match each other. You'll usually, you will usually hear <laughs> scales practice from, you know, the low note dun, 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 to the highest note or the other way from the highest note to the lowest note. You can practice those that way all you want, but that's not exactly the way scales sound their best. We make melodies, guitar solos, bass lines, counter melodies. Scales tend to jump around between notes when you're making a melody. If a melody just traveled up and down the scale, it wouldn't sound very pleasing. It would just sound like you're practicing. Okay, so the next thing is, now we know what scales are. Scales are different than chords. The group of notes in a scale are meant to be played one after another. This is different than chords. While chords, like scales, use a group of note that all mat notes that all match each other, and chord notes are designed to be heard all at the same time. Scales aren't. Scales go one after another. Um, and this is another thing that I've covered before. If you're unfamiliar with this, let me see which one is where it's uh, episode five, our last episode. Really understanding chords can help you out with this. It's a it's really a, a great episode to listen to. Um, but chord and scales, bottom line, they need each other. Generally, the rhythm instruments that play the chords, they support the instruments that play the melodies, this what you use your scales for. The chord player set the tonal center and the melody player plays a scale that matches the chord. Okay, so let's get some more foundational information. How are scales built? Well, not all notes sound good together. And there's reasons why certain group of notes match each other. There are also reasons why certain different scales they have different sounds and different functions. The best way to understand how scales are built is to jump right in. We're going to build a C major scale all on one string. Okay, so if you want to play along with me, go ahead and grab your guitar. I've got mine here. Um, we're going to build our first scale. We're going to start with the note C. Uh, so go ahead and play this note. It's on the third fret of the A string on the guitar. This is going to be our tonic note. That's the strongest note of a scale. It also determines what key you're playing. So we'll give this note a number. We're going to give it the number one. So C, number one. Next, we're going to slide up to the fifth fret. That's going to be two frets higher on the same string. Play that note. This is a D and we'll give this note the number two. Okay, moving on. We're going to go up another two frets to the seventh fret. This note is an E. We'll give it the number three. Next, we're going to only slide up one fret this time, a half step. We're going to go up to the eighth fret. This note is an F, and we give it the number four. Two more frets up to the tenth fret. This is a G. We're going to give it the number five. One, uh, three more here. We're going to go up to the twelfth fret. That's two frets higher. This note's an A. We'll give it the number six. Two more frets to the 14th. 
This is a B. We'll call it number seventh. And last but la not least, we'll slide up one more fret to the 15th. This is a C again. It's the same note we started from. It's just an octave higher. We will give this note the number one again, like that. So here, let me play these all in the row. What do you think? Does it sound familiar? What we just built is a C major scale. Most people recognize this as the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do song. You do it in vocal warm ups and you heard it in the sound of music, all that stuff. But how did we do this? We had a starting note and then we continued in order by sliding up either one fret or two frets to the next note in the scale. Knowing when to use either the distance of one fret or two frets is the trick to being able to make a good sounding scale. And to know which one we're going to use, we need to understand something called intervals. What's an interval? An interval is very simple. It's the distance between two notes. There are lots of different intervals with different sounds and distances. They all have different names that relate to the sound that they make. For our purpose to, purposes today, we will concentrate on only two intervals. The two we're going to need to build this scale are the major second and the minor second. The interval of a major second on the guitar is the space between two frets. We're going to call that a whole step. Two frets, whole step. Okay. The next interval we're, we'll talk about is the minor second. And the minor second on the guitar is the space of one fret. That's called a half step. So it would be right next to each other where the whole step is two frets. Half step is just the space of one fret. Notice that when we build the C major scale above, we only moved either one or two frets between each note. Those are our half steps and whole steps. Different scales have different combinations of half steps and whole steps. That's what gives them their unique sound. Uh, and later on, we're going to talk all about whole steps and half steps and how we're going to build this major scale. Uh, but we're going to, before we move to that, I, there's something more important we need to know. We need to go on to step three. What are the best scales to learn for your style of music? There are lots of different scales. Uh, in my journey with the guitar, I've learned many different scales. And from time to time, I use all of the scales I've learned. But I've found out I generally use certain scales for certain styles of music. And today I'm going to focus on the scales that are used the most for popular music. When I'm playing and teaching popular music, I always focus on the big four. Uh, those are number one, the major scale. Number two, the natural minor scale. Number three, the major pentatonic scale. And number four, the minor pentatonic scale. Those are the big four. If you ever listen to popular music at all, you're familiar with the sounds of these scales. The major scale is the happy scale. It's a happy sounding scale. It has seven notes. Most people relate the sound of this to the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do song, which we just played uh, when we constructed our major scale on one string. The next scale is the natural minor scale. It's the most common scale to play to get sad sounds. It's seven note scale as well. And you'll also find uh, the natural minor scale in a lot of hard rock songs. Uh, the major pentatonic scale is next. It's a slimmed down major scale. It's only got five notes. Uh, we take two notes out of the major scale and come up with the major pentatonic scale. Uh, it's used a lot in country, southern rock, soul music, blues, some folk music. Um, and the last of the big four is the minor pentatonic. And that's the one most of us start with. It's a slim down natural minor scale. It's got five notes and, you know, it's from the full minor scale, but we take two notes away. So it's got five notes and it's primarily used in blues and rock music. Being comfortable and confident all over the neck of the guitar with a big four gives you what you need to play lead guitar in popular music. But not only that, knowing these skills help you with a lot of stuff. Reading music, songwriting, creating and learning vocal melodies, vocal harmonies, and bass lines. Um, so what is the major scale? What does it sound like? That's our first scale. It's a very happy sound and it matches perfectly to major chords. So here, like, here's a C. And here's our C major scale. They match. Uh, I've gone over this several times before, but today we're going to find out why each of the notes in the C major scale 
Uh, well, we're going to find out what they are, and we're going to find out um, using our intervals, our major second and minor second intervals. So let's talk about that. How do we build a major scale? Here's the formula. This is kind of the DNA of Western music. If you boil music down to one thing, if you could do that, what would it be? My opinion is this. This is the formula to build a major scale. Whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. That is the blueprint to making a major scale. Okay, well, what does that mean? Let's take a look at the scale that we built on the A string a few minutes ago. First, we started with the C, and we slid up two frets from the C. C to the D. That's a whole step. Two frets. So we're going to use a W for that. We're going to call that first one a W. So C to D, that's a whole step. Next, we slid up another two from the D to the E. That's another whole step. So we'll give that a W too. So we have W, W. Okay, so after the E, this time we moved up one more fret to the F. That's a half step. So our formula so far is whole, whole, half or WWH. Next note is G. That's up. Another whole step. Two frets. Then we have A. That's another whole step. That's up two frets. Then we had the B, which is another two frets. And then we ended on an H, a half step, to get back to C. Okay, so we, we built a formula. Whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Going through these steps one by one easily shows this. It's a, it's, a, it's a formula we can use for all major scales. It doesn't just work for C major. It works for any major scale. So go ahead and grab your guitar, pick any note. Try to pick a note that's closer down to the note of the guitar because we're going to do this all on one string. But find a note on any string and start working your way up the neck using the WWH, WWWH formula. Here we go. I'm going to try one. I'm going to do the first fret on the D string. We have an E flat. That's what that is. And I'm just going to move up whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Let's see if it sounds like a major scale. Sounds like it to me. Okay. I just built an E flat major scale. Didn't even have to know the names of the rest of the notes. I just plugged that formula in. There it is. But when we move forward from this, we learn that scales are not only played on one string, as you all already know. Uh, you know that the notes on the guitar strings overlap each other, mostly on the fifth fret, but you know, we've got that one on the B that starts on the fourth fret. This is awesome for lead players. This is going to allow us to play our scales in one position without having to move our hand up and down the neck like we just did on those single strings. To make it even easier for us, there are patterns that follow that whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half formula in each position of the guitar neck. And you can, you can find these patterns. You can look for major scale patterns, minor scale patterns, pentatonic patterns. They're all over the internet. Uh, I'll be putting my own out too uh, relatively soon. But a lot of players memorize these patterns without really understanding what we've already talked about above. It's not just enough to memorize some patterns on the guitar without understanding the reasoning behind them. And this can be a big stumbling block to players who are trying to master lead guitar. So when would you use the major scale? Well, the major scale has many uses. The main one is just, you know, playing it over major chords. This C scale sounds wonderful when you play it over a C major chord or a C major chord progression. There's another thing we can use the, C, the major scale for, and that's, the, and that's a big use of it, is to use it to find our modes. And you can think of modes as child scales that come from the parent major scale. So it's pretty simple. It sounds confusing, but it's very simple. We just take the same notes of the major scale, but we change the starting note. So instead of playing... C to C on this uh, scale. We would start with the, we're going to 
For an example, I'm going to start with the second note. You would just start on a different note other than C. So I'll take that same formula, the whole, whole half, but I'll change my starting note to D, which is the second note now. So here we go. Here's... And you see, it's got a different sound. It's kind of a sadder sound. It's a, it's a minor-y kind of sound. So when we use the D as the new tonic note, but we keep all the notes the same as the C major scale, you know, the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, it gives us that sad scale. It's called the Dorian mode. It's kind of a fancy sad. It's not like the natural minor. It's got a sad but kind of jazzy sound. It's used in several different styles of music. And playing modes is big. That's as far as I'm going to get into it today. Uh, but it's definitely worth some time on modes. And I'm going to be getting back to that in the future. The next one we're going to talk about is the natural minor scale. It's our most common sad sounding scale. And it's used in all styles of music. So how do I build a natural minor scale? There's several different types of minor scales. Natural minor is the easiest one to build. We just take our C scale that we built above and change the, the starting note to the sixth de degree of the scale. That's the A note. So you should be thinking, hey, that sounds a lot like those modes we just talked about a minute ago. Exactly. That's another name for the natural minor scale is the Aeolian mode, which sounds very fancy. But, you know, this mode, the Aeolian mode, starts on the sixth degree of the major scale. So let's find out what the sixth note is here. So we have C was one, one, these two, E's three, F is four, G is five, A. A is six. So I'm going to play this scale starting on A and play through the C major scale, but have the new note be A. And here's, let's hear what it sounds like. It's a sad sound as well. Okay, so when would you use this scale? When would you use a natural minor scale? Well, it sounds great. If you used a C natural minor scale, it would sound great playing over a C minor chord or a C minor chord progression. So that's the natural minor scale. Number three, that's we're going to talk about what is a pentatonic scale. The pentatonic scale, it's, which is a hands-down favorite of... All of my students, it's a simple scale that's made up of five notes. It's the scale of the people. Uh, folk music of many different cultures has been based around the five-note scale. Chinese, Celtic, German, West African, American gospel, folk, bluegrass, jazz, country, all, all that stuff. They're all based around a five-note scale. So what's so important about a five-note scale? Why do the notes of the pentatonic scale resonate with such different cultures? enough to base their folk music around it. Uh, you saw, well, we talked about earlier that the major and the natural minor scales both have seven notes. We actually get our pentatonic scales from the seven note scales. To form the pentatonic scale, we just remove two of those notes. This leaves the strongest, most consonant notes and removes some of the weaker ones. Because only the strong notes of the scale are left, people, no matter where they come from, tend to find the pentatonic scale pretty pleasing. And the fact that so many different cultures, separate people, they found the notes of the pentatonic scale pleasing enough to base their folk music on it, it proves to me that music is definitely a universal language. The two most common pentatonic scales are the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic. That's our third and our fourth scales we need to learn. Uh, if you just turn any music on Nowadays, load up your favorite music player and in no time you'll be hearing one of these two scales. They're very popular. So let's take a look at those. What's the major pentatonic scale? Earlier we gave the C major scale a set of numbers. They went from one to seven. And after that, when after you hit seven, you went back to one. To build a major pentatonic scale, we're going to remove two of those notes. We're going to remove the fourth and the seventh note. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and play the C scale. And I'm going to take out the fourth and the seventh note. You tell me what it sounds like. Do it again. So that leaves the first, the second, the third, the fifth, and the sixth notes. And what, what are left, those are the strongest sounding, strongest sounding notes of the major scale. 
You've got the beginning, which is kind of the do re mi. Then you've got the fifth, the major sixth, and back to the root or the tonic. You hear this scale all the time in country, southern rock, blues. It has a happy, a warm, and a carefree sound, and it really feels good. You can use this scale over major chords, major chord progressions, dominant chords, and blues progressions, to name a few. Okay, so let's go. Let's try the minor pentatonic scale. Well, we built the natural minor scale earlier, the one that went from A to A using the C major scale. Uh... That gave us the you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. It's going from six to six on the scale. Let's go ahead and remove the same two notes, the four and the seven that we did with the major pentatonic scale. That's gonna give us something that sounds like this. That leaves the A, C, D, E, and G notes. That's the A minor pentatonic scale. The minor pentatonic scale Pentatonic scale is extremely common. It's in many of my stu students' favorite songs. I usually teach a scale first when they start learning lead guitar. Uh, rock, blues, jazz, and even folk and country are filled with this cool scale. It can sound aggressive, cool, sad, introspective. It just depends on the style of music and the way you played it. It can be played over a minor chord, minor chord progression, a dominant chord, a blues progression, and many, many other rock chord progressions. So whether you're just starting out on lead guitar, you've been playing for a while, understanding what scales are and how they sound is, the, the, is very important. Just memorizing scale patterns is only part of the battle. Today we learned the big four essential scales. We talked about the major, natural minor, major pentatonic, minor pentatonic. We found out their basic sound, how they're constructed, and the best ways to use them. Knowing the information we talked about today is a very strong step in the right direction on our goal of mastering scales on the guitar. But it's not the end. I've just started this one. We'll continue working our way through my six-step plan on really understanding guitar scales. At this point, I'm not sure if I'm going to do these all in a row or I may break them up over time because I've got a lot of cool stuff coming and I have to make some decisions pretty soon. But let me know by commenting in the show notes or get in touch with me on Twitter I'm at PlayGuitarPDCST on Twitter, and tell me if this helped you out, if you'd like to hear more of this kind of stuff. And so thanks for hanging in there with me, and just hold on a second for Guitar News. Okay, this is Guitar News. It's my weekly time to report on the wonderful and hysterically dysfunctional world of guitar players. There's been a lot of... Guitar news lately, uh, mostly from the NAMM show that recently finished with, a, you know, who was there, who wasn't there. That was a big one we talked about the other day. Uh, and a lot of the great stuff that's, co that's come out. Um, I'm going to talk about one of the products that they had at the NAMM show this year in just a minute. Um, but we have three articles today that I'm going to talk about. They're all from Guitar World. And the first one is about... Paul Simon, he announces his farewell tour. There's a lot of this going on lately. A lot of these uh, 60s groups, I, well, Elton John, more of a 70s, but Elton John has just announced his farewell tour as well. It lasts three years. You've got to, If you really want to see him, I think you got you got plenty of time to go see him. But he's on his farewell tour. But Paul Simon has just announced his. It's called the Homeward Bound Tour, and it will take Simon across North America from mid-May to mid June. He it says Paul Simon's one half of Simon and Garfunkel and one of the most successful singer songwriters of all time. He's announced this tour. Um, he always wondered what it would feel like to reach a point where he considered bringing it to an end. And he says it feels a little unsettling. So as it stands right now, the North American leg of the tour would be Simon going across the United States with three stops in Canada. And it, May 16th with a show at Rogers Arena, Vancouver, and ends June 20th in Nashville. So, yeah, and there are the show notes right there. So, if he's one of your favorites, get out there and see him. This is it. The next uh, article came from Guitar World as well. This is Eddie Van Halen sues to halt the release of a 5150 Vault documentary. 
which would have been pretty cool if it came out. Let's see. The project was filmed in 2006, 2007 by Andrew Bennett and Van Halen stopped it. Uh, and he's suing him to, to, uh, stop the release of the footage without Eddie's permission. He filed a civil injunction on Friday to halt the release and sale of the footage that was taken by Andrew Bennett and his studios in 2006. Well, I would have loved to seen that, but you know, that's, it looks like he's putting it out anyway and charging. Was he charging? He says he's selling copies of the 5150 vault on the documentary where it's selling them for $500 each. That's pretty, that's a lot of money. Um, it also says that he had turned it. Oh, I think it says he had turned the footage over out of respect for Eddie earlier and gave him a hard drive that didn't work. That's, oh, that's, that's rough. Well, anyway, if you got 500 bucks and you want to see Van Halen jamming, there's a guy selling it right here, but I just buy a ticket, go see Van Halen probably be better. Okay. And the last thing is I want to tell you something that came out in Nam. The Axe Effects 3 has come out. Um The Axe Effects 3, this is from the company, culminates dozens of years of development and truly state of the art product equipped with four processors. The Axe Effects 3 contains more raw processing power than any hardware effect press- processor ever made by far. So the continuing competition between Axe FX, Kemper, and Line 6 continues. Um, has, let's see, it has a dedicated graphics processor um, for handling the LCD. It's fully animating, animated, provides meters, moving nods, and other feedback. It says the in-out has been upgraded a bit. It's got fast link port for connection to the foot controllers. But here's what I was, every effect has been updated and improved. Our acclaimed amp modeling is now better than ever. And our award-winning effects are even more pristine and musical. I am excited to listen to that. I'd like to try one of these out. I've been back and forth about getting an Axe effects, but the introductory pricing is $2,499.99. And availability is anticipated in early March, 2018. So it's coming soon. Well, uh, if, if you're, if you got $2,500 and this is it for you, I'm looking forward. Tell me all about it. Leave me some information in the show notes. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, bring this up. I'm not going to have creating the band today. This has been my first week of running the blog and the podcast and the videos all at the same time. Uh, once I settle down a bit and get into a good routine, I'll, I'll take the next step in creating the band. Um, and that next step should be finishing out all of the 10 basic song ideas. I uh, need about three more short ideas to go. And, and after that, I'm going to start taking this one song at a time and start organizing the song structure for each of those songs. And you can be a fly on the wall as we, we go through that. Okay. Well, that's a wrap for today. Thanks for joining me for the Play Guitar Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the show in iTunes or in your favorite podcast player. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave an iTunes review for the show. It'd be great. If you're interested in online lessons, go on over to PlayGuitarAcademy.com and join my early adopter list to get news on the opening of the site and an early adopter discount. Also, follow me on all my different social media pages. Links to them are at www.PlayGuitarPodcast.com. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next episode.